Last week we revealed a very pleasant surprise about Kia Nero EV, Tom Malagny, who is uh, my guest today once again. I shouldn't say guest, it's really his segment. Uh, we call it Plugged In with Tom Malagny and we do it every Friday. So he was in the middle of a test drive of, of Kia Nero EV. And by test drive, I mean a week long test drive. And he revealed the fact that the real world range was closer to 300 miles rather than about 240, 250 miles that was advertised. And now, he was still in the middle of it. Now he has completed it. And there are a couple of other surprises. I mean, this car that's now available, you know, for sale pretty much around the world, um, keeps on giving this, you know, surprises to us. And he is back today to talk about a couple of more. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about uh, coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. And of course, I want to give a quick thank you to one of my newer Patreons, Eric Tell. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon community, the only place where you can watch me live and support this independent YouTube channel. All right, so... Um, you know, uh, last week, I got to tell you, I, I've driven a uh, Kia Niro uh, EV back in January, and I was a little surprised that even though uh, we were flooring our, our demo car, uh, we came up with still what I think was 260 mile range, and I was like, whoa, like, that's that's pretty surprising, and then I kind of forgot about it, but, um, you know, Tom, when he was test driving it, um, you know, kind of was me maybe more uh, modest in, in how, how hard he was driving his car, so he was able to get... 300 miles out of it so that was pretty amazing but today we're going to talk about the rest of his test as you know he is very well but he's one of the you know veterans of, of the industry he specializes in charging um and he put the car through a lot of charging tests and he he time stuff they're charged their numbers so uh, way way above my you know level of uh of expertise so he's going to tell us all about uh, the uh, the level two charging, the DC charging, and and again, that's where the surprises are going to be coming from. Uh, but you know the rest of the stuff because this car is really turning out to be, uh, it, regardless what Kia thinks about it, one of the best, if not the best, electric car in the market for for a lot of people out there. So, all right, so Tom's gonna be here in just one second. Of course, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byton. Check out the all electric SUV called Ambyte coming to the US and Europe at the end of next year, starting at only $45,000. That's before the incentives. Check out that amazing screen and uh, make sure to get on the reservation list. Over 50,000 of us are already there waiting for you guys. And there's zero dollars down to get on the list, about 60 seconds of your time. So get yours in the description of this video. All right, so um, let's see. I think I have a picture somewhere of his car. Here it is. Um, that's the car he was test driving. I, I, I like the look. I would still wrap it like, um, you know, I have a picture somewhere of the car that I took at the very first day when they've unveiled the picture, uh, unveiled the car. Um, and I, if I ever drive one, I think I'm just going to wrap it exactly like this. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see about that. All right, guys, without further ado, let me bring the uh, bring Tom in here. Tom, how are you doing, my friend? All right, Alex, thanks for having me again. Oh, I got so excited I forgot <laughs> to start switching cameras. All right. Well, so you've completed your uh, your test drive. Um, you know, it was about a week, right? Um, tell us what are the rest of your impressions are. And I know you got some news uh, and some observations uh, as far as charging is concerned. Is one of the most important things when you consider an electric car. Yeah, so uh, Kia was kind enough to uh, drop a car off at my house for a week. And uh, that ended last, uh, this past Wednesday. So I had the car for seven days and I drove it uh, exactly 900 miles. So when I get a, a press car loan, I like to drive it. I like to get a really good feel for the car. Uh, I think that's really how I can give my best impressions and talk to different audiences about it. Um, I don't wanna just drive it 20 or 30 miles a day. I take road trips every day. Uh, one of the things I did was I drove, uh, uh, I think it was 125 miles each way to, uh, no, it was 112, to uh, the Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania Electrify America site to test the car out on some of the 150 kilowatt uh, DC fast chargers. There's 
Unfortunately, there's none closer to me here in northern New Jersey, so I was able to take a nice uh, long uh, test drive out there to uh, check out the high-speed charging, which we'll get into the charging a little bit later. Uh, my overall impressions, basically, is, you know, I think this is a great electric car. It really is. I think this will be the best choice for many people. Really just depends on what you're looking for in a car. This was at the top of my list. And as I mentioned in some past segments, I had really considered buying one. And I almost did. And if I did, I, I wouldn't regret it. It's a great car. They, they dropped me off, of course. Uh, the press usually drives you off, drops you off the premium with all the options. So I got this, you know, uh, top of the line EX premium version. They even had air conditioned seats. And we happen to have a real nice warm week here in New Jersey. So I got to use the air conditioning, air conditioned seats every every day, and I tell you, that's a great option to have. I'm I'm gonna wish I wish my Tesla had it, um, which I'll be getting next week. We'll talk about that later. I yeah. finally got my yeah. delivery date. Yeah. Um, so I mean, uh, the Kia comes even the EX, the base model of the Nero EV comes standard with a whole host of safety features: lane keep assist, uh, you know, advanced cruise control automatic braking, uh, you know, blind spot warning. And, and those are all standard uh, on, on even the base EX model. So, I mean, th th this is really a great electric vehicle. It has the most cargo space, most interior volume of any of its main competitors, which would be like the Bolt EV, the uh, Hyundai uh, Kona EV, and the Nissan Leaf. Uh, so th th those cars I really think are its main competition. Of course, there's going to be cross shopping with the Model 3. I obviously am one person who cross shopped it with a Model 3. Uh, and the Model 3 edged out a little bit uh, based on, you know, I, I put a little bit more weight on driving experience and style. Uh, and I know that uh, many people um, go for the, 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 the function uh, a little bit higher than form. And for those people, I tell you, Take a good long look at the Nero EV. It's a great car. You can squeeze out 300 miles if you don't really step on it. Uh, if you drive it even fairly aggressively, you can get 275 miles per charge as long as it's fairly good weather. It was, as I mentioned earlier, it was in the 70s. That's good range weather for an EV. I'm sure once it drops down into the teens and even lower here in New Jersey, we're going to lose 40 or 50 miles of range. The car does have an optional heat pump, which would help to mitigate the range loss uh, in the cold weather. So I think that that would be helpful. But, uh, you know, as far as an everyday vehicle, uh, I tell you, uh, I mentioned this in the last segment. I forget the exact term that I use, something like relentlessly normal. But that, that's, that's just a great uh, way to describe the car. It doesn't pop, you know, when you look at it, it doesn't, uh, uh, you know, you don't say, oh, wow, look at that car. Like you kind of may do, you may with a, with a, a Tesla, um, but it, it doesn't look bad. I think, I think it looks nice for a small family crossover. Uh, it does everything that you'd want it to. Uh, the regenerative braking system is excellent, probably second only to the Bolt. Although I haven't spent a lot of time in the new Nissan Leaf with the one pedal driving. I need to get myself in one of those for a week. Maybe someone from Nissan will be watching this video and reach out to me. I'd like to do an extended test drive of the Leaf E Plus soon because, uh, you know, I, I hear that their regenerative braking system is much improved over previous versions, which I did not like. Uh, the Chevy Bolt probably still is, in my opinion, the benchmark, but uh, the Kia Nero and also the Kona EV have great braking system. Uh, it's got four different levels of regenerative braking. You can even completely disengage regenerative braking when you're on the highway and you want to do some coasting. Uh, and it also has the paddle on the steering wheel. You can pull that in and, uh, and come to a complete stop. Now, the one thing that I didn't like that I think the Bolt has an advantage is that the car creeps and it does artificial creep. And if you use, if you don't use the paddle and you come to it like a rolling stop, it will continue. It won't stop. It'll continue to creep. Now there is a button you can press 
on the center console to make it stop. But that's kind of a hassle pressing the button. If you roll up to a stop sign or a traffic light and you use the paddle shifter or the paddle uh, regenerative brake to stop, then the car does hold itself stop and, and won't creep forward until you hit the accelerator. Um, after a few days, I got used to using that paddle and it was a non-starter for me. I thought it would be kind of a, a pain to have to do that. But after a few days, I got so used to it. When I started driving my i3 after Kia took it back, Every time I was pulling up to a stop sign, I was grabbing the steering wheel for a paddle. <laughs> I do the same thing when I had my Obviously Tesla. Obviously, it's not there. Yeah, when I had my Tesla, and you know, I have a Volt, and Volt has the same thing. Not as advanced as Nero, but uh, whenever I went to back to Tesla, I kept you know, hitting my uh, wheel of the steering wheel from the other side, hoping the car would stop, and it wouldn't. So I love that feature. So yeah. absolutely. So I, I. I, it's one of my favorite ones. Yeah, I, I really like... Um, the, the paddles on the steering wheel. And I, I hope more auto makers incorporate those into their EVs. I know I've heard, I've had a few people comment that they don't like them, but you know what? Can't please everyone. I've driven pretty much every EV out there. Uh, I'm a big regenerative brake guy. I, I really love strong regen. I love not having to use my friction brakes at all, recapturing as much energy as I can. And I just think that the paddle shifters really allow you to maximize the amount of energy that you recapture and really even have more control over the car. Yeah, so yeah. I'm a big, big fan of them. Absolutely. All right. Well, so let's talk about the, the energy of the car. Now I, I know, I mean, we always try to use the, the, the backdrop of uh, all of your uh, probably the biggest museum collection of all the chargers. Uh, people should know that that goes for miles there in your garage. But I know you've done quite a few tests about, you know, with, with level two charging and you took it to Electrify America and EVgo and, and try some uh, uh, fast DC charging. Uh, and I think that's where the surprises are coming from that we kind of promised in the beginning of the show. Tell us what they are. Okay. So... I, I was a little surprised with both DC fast charge and level two charging with uh, um, the, the Nero EV. Uh, as far as the DC fast charge go, it's kind of my bad, I'll admit it, because there were reports out there already on this that I just didn't catch. And uh, um, so what, what I was expecting was close to 100 kilowatts of DC that the car would accept because in Kia's, uh, all their marketing materials, they use... Uh, 100 kilowatts as an example of how long the car takes to charge. But they kind of cleverly word it to, to be that if it's at 100 kilowatt DC fast charger, it will charge in this period of time. They're not implying that it'll accept 100 kilowatts. But if you just look at it, it kind of appears that that's what it would take. But as I said, there's a few other people out there already that have proven that that's not the case. I just missed that. So I rolled up to this Electrify America station. It's a 150 kilowatt DC fast charge station in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. There's the vehicle there and expected to pull 100 kilowatts. And unfortunately, I plugged in and for a brief moment, it topped out at 78 kilowatts, but then it dropped down to 75 and not too long into my charging session, it dropped all the way down to 39 kilowatts and maintained that for most of the time. Now, the station had some kind of fault and shut off when I was only charging for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then I, so I reinitiated a new charge. Again, it went up to 75, 77 kilowatts. Then it dropped down to 60 kilowatts and it held at 60 for most of the charge. I think till I was somewhere around 60%. And, uh, and that's what, from what I'm reading, from what other people um, have experienced, that's the proper charging profile. It shouldn't have dropped down to the 39 kilowatts that it did the first time I plugged in so early at, at, at only 30% charge. Most people report that it will charge at 75 kilowatts for a short period of time. Then it'll kind of ramp down to 60 kilowatts, hold the 60 kilowatts almost all the way up to when it's 80% charge. By the time it gets to 80% charge, it's, it's dropping down to like around 25 kilowatts. So, you know, it's not that much better than a car that, you know, advertises at 50 kilowatts that can take 50 kilowatts for most of the charging session. Um, the Nero seems to average about 58 kilowatts uh, from zero to 80%. So it is better. It's a little bit better, but it's not 
what I had expected it to be better. I really thought I was going to plug in and be pulling 100 kilowatts till it was like 30 or 40 or 50 percent charged. That was not the case. But as I said, I'm not revealing any major news here. Other people have reported on that. I just hadn't seen it. How long did it uh, take you to go from, uh, well, uh, how long, uh, what was your battery charge once you got there? What was the final uh, battery charge and how long uh, did it take you to get there? So I plugged in at 9%. Okay. And I unplugged at 80%. Okay. And I had that one period of time where I had to, you know, unplug the car and then plug it back in and reinitiate a new session. But that took me 54, I think it was 54 minutes to go from 9% to 80%. Yeah. Not now, terrible. It's it, not terrible, it's but not terrible. it's 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 I, I had expected a little more, um but like I said there's there's some people out there that reported on that already so I'm not breaking news on that. Yeah. One and, of the things that I haven't seen reported though and perhaps it is, I did a quick internet search was the level 2 charging profile. And um that's one that was on the positive side that really impressed me. So I, I plugged into my, as you can see right behind me, the juice box uh, Pro 40. And one thing that I like about it is it gives me some really, really good records on my app. I can see exactly how much energy the car pulled during the charging session and even real time energy draws. And, you know, I'm geeky about that stuff. I, I like to see that. I can lower the amperage. I could raise the amperage if I want. Uh, and as you can see there from the highlighted mark, uh, when I tr when I plugged in, I was at three percent state of charge, and uh, it took seventy one kilowatt hours of electricity. Now the Kia says that the Nero has a sixty four kilowatt hour battery, so I I was able to 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 use seventy one kilowatt hours. Now not all of that ends up in the battery because there are charging losses. So you know, let's say the charging losses were you know, 8%, that would be six or seven kilowatt hours. Uh, and that would take us down to the 64 kilowatt hours that the battery pack has. Now, I wasn't completely exhausted. I was still at 3% and it still took 71 kilowatt hours. So, you know, what we're seeing here is the, 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 the Kia Nero definitely has 64 kilowatt hours of usable energy. The battery pack itself has to be much larger. Wait, and Tom. Wait, wait. I, that that's I I haven't seen anything like this out there, and I mean I've I've double checked. I are you suggesting that the actual battery of Kia Nero EV could be bigger than sixty four kilowatt hours? Yeah, I'm not just suggesting. It is uh, for a fact, and you know I don't. Again, I haven't done enough research to see if that's been announced somewhere. I did a quick search. I didn't see it, but I'm sure. I've never some, heard of it. I'm sure some of the Nero owners, especially in Europe, that have had the car longer already, have have witnessed that and seen it. I don't know if it's been written about yet, but I was surprised to see that it took 71 kilowatt hours. Now, uh, like I said, there's charging losses that didn't all go in the battery, but the battery took, you know, at least. 62, 63, 64 kilowatt hours. So the the actual total size of the the the, the Nero EV battery pack has got to be close to 70 kilowatt hours uh, because you know there's going to be a buffer on the higher end and the lower end. And what makes me even certain that there's a buffer and probably a good size buffer is if you take a look, if you can post the picture of the charging profile. Uh, th there we go right there. So you can see that's from the JuiceNet app where I plugged in, uh, you know, at around nine, nine o'clock PM and it charged all night. And I, I was actually standing there ready to unplug it when it finished charging at, it was around 630 ish or somewhere around there, um, in the morning. Take a look at that charging profile. The line is just basically straight. It actually started to increase the, uh, the, the kilowatt draw over the night. And that's probably not the car. It's probably more of a function of the, the voltage in my house probably was gradually rising overnight. So the car, you know, the, the charging rate is a, is a product of the voltage available times the, the amount of amps that the car wants. 
So, uh, you know, it, it pulled a constant 32 amps all night from literally from the minute I plugged it in till the minute it shut off charging. I've never seen a charging profile look like that. And I've charged every electric car that there is pretty much by now at my house. Usually the car ramps up a little bit. Sometimes it jumps up a lot in the beginning, like you see there, you know, basically goes to full a charging rate within a minute or so. But I've never seen the car go to 100% at the full <laughs> draw and then just stop charging. Usually at, you know, some start, start ramping down at 80, 85%. Some cars start ramping down at 90. Um, the earlier, I, the first i3 that I had started really slowing down around 90%. This second one that I have now with a bigger battery, it holds the full charge rate to almost 95%, which is really good. It's better than most cars out there. But this Kia Nero EV, it took the full 7.5 kilowatts until it shut off at 100%. And the only way it could really do that is if there's a, a lot of battery buffer at the top end that, you know, that, that, that doesn't cause any cell imbalance or overcharging. So which would be a problem. That's why the cars ramp down their charge at the end, because you don't want any one of the cells to be overcharged. So, the, you know, the, the, the Nero EV has got to have, you know, a good size battery. It's, I'm thinking it's got to be at least 70 kilowatt hours. Yeah, wow. I mean, you just like loaded us with some surprises. So let me just unpack this in my head because it's like this big right now. Okay, so you're saying that uh, the battery of uh, Nero EV is uh, larger than it's advertised, which... Now also kind of made explain the the large I mean bigger range but at the same time these are like all the stuff that's good usually we we're, we're we're so used to hearing that oh yeah the stats were amazing but the cars really not as not not only the stats are pretty much ex the specs that they were advertising are, are are right on the money it's actually the 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 real life stuff is much better now the only thing that from what I'm seeing that there's a good thing and a bad thing here so for the for the level two correct me if I'm wrong for the level two um a, a charging system here is amazing it's just charging at a ridiculous like steady uh, top rate. Um, but the DC fast charging is uh, not even ever hitting or getting anywhere close to, to the advertised rate. As a matter of fact, it ramps down real quick. Is Am I kind of getting this uh, right here? Well, kind of. Like I said, Kia was very careful on how they worded. They didn't say it's a 100 kilowatt charge rate. They said it takes 60 minutes from zero to 80% at a hundred kilowatt DC fast charge station. But when you see a hundred kilowatts, you assume that, well, okay, the car charges a hundred kilowatts. But what Kia is saying is that, no, no, no. We're saying if you go to a hundred kilowatt DC fast charge station, this is how long it'll take to charge. They don't actually make any proclamation on how much energy it will accept. But we're just used to looking at the specs from all of the other cars that are out there and saying, well, if they list it as 50 kilowatts, then okay, the car will accept 50 kilowatts. Uh, you know, so they kind of played with us with how they print, they advertise the charge rate. So I'm not going right. to accuse them of lying. They didn't lie. They just cleverly wrote how long the car charges on a DC fast charger. All right, all right, fair enough. All right, so now before we get an update on your Model 3 delivery, um, tell us just, you know, I remember in the beginning of the show, you mentioned that, you know, this could be uh, the best option for somebody shopping for an electric car. Um, you know, I have my reasons why I think it could could be, and I think um, um, it's, it's the pricing. I think, you know, because Kia still has $7,500 uh, tax incentive here in the, in the United States, and on top of that, they actually have a very good lease price, which you obviously can't say about Tesla in either one of those categories. So you're really, really getting a great deal here. Um, but uh, what, what is... What, what, what kind of person? <laughs> what is that perfect customer that um, would look at this car, look at Teslas and other, and other options that they have that are growing um, and say, you know what, this is the best car for me. Uh, tell us a little bit about like what, what kind of a target customer or perfect customer for this car you, uh, you believe that it's out there. 
Okay, well, I'll throw a little cold water on that. The first, the first qualification for that perfect customer is you have to live in one of the 12 states that Kia is selling the car in. Okay, so come so, on, let me ask you about that. I know I've been a little, a little bit confused. Now, I know they're selling in, in the ZEV states only, but if I live in one of those non-ZEV states, can I still drive to the ZEV state or can I have it delivered or I'm not, like, not allowed to have one? Like, How does that work? You absolutely can. And a lot of people are. We're, we're, on Inside EVs, we're getting a lot of reports that people are ordering them. You can go to like car guru, gurus now, and they, there's like 20 pages of Kia Nero EVs that are available in the states where they're selling them. And you can just contact that dealer and have it shipped to you or buy it and drive it home. Uh, the funny thing is I had one person comment on my article on Inside EVs that he lives in Texas. And he's like, man, this would be the perfect car for me. But, uh, you know, I live in Texas, so forget about it. And, and the crazy thing is, for some reason, he is selling them in Texas. They're selling them in uh, the 10 Zev states and, and two other states. And Texas is one of those states, which is kind of bizarre because you don't think of Texas being one of the states that a manufacturer would go out of their way to sell an electric car. Yeah, in. Yeah. Um, although Tesla sells very well in, in, in yeah. Texas. Um, but uh, so they're available in Texas. If you live, you know, in the, in the Lone Star State, uh, you can get one. They're not available at every, every Kia dealer, but the, there are a good number of dealers that are, are available there. So you, you can grab one if you live in Texas. What you know, if about- you live in Oklahoma, you could uh, drive down to Texas and get one because uh, I don't think they're going to be at the Oklahoma Kia dealers anytime soon. <laughs> Okay, but, what about, let's say, if I do buy it in, in another state and bring it to Oklahoma, would I still be able to get it serviced or would I also have to go out of state to get it serviced? So that's kind of a, a you know, question mark. The thing is, it, the manufacturer has to service the car. They, they can't, by law, they cannot not service the car. So at, at, at worst, they would have to, ship it to, to a dealer in Texas and have them fix it and then, you know, ship it back. Uh, if, if none of the Kia dealers, say in the state you lived in, uh, were qualified or, or were willing to work on it. But the thing is, the manufacturer is legally obligated to provide service for any car they sell anywhere. Fair enough. So, yeah, you can, you can buy it. If that car is available anywhere in the U.S., for sale, you can buy it and the manufacturer has to service it. Now they can fight you on it. They can make it very difficult for you. They can, you know, you know, really make it a hassle, but in the end, they have to service a car if they sell it. Okay. All right. So um, I'll go on with your list. So yes, obviously that's a big, you know, not a big, but it is a problem, but okay. So if you live in one of those F states or you're willing to deal with a whole interstate ex- inter- yeah. exchange, um, but wh- what are the, what are the things that you think that will appeal to to people that will end up picking this at their next uh, electric car? Well, I, I touched on them earlier. I mean, number one, the range is fantastic. You know, we just uh, we just haven't had a variety of cars available that can deliver 200 to 300 miles of range. It's so great to see that start happening now. You know, what if you you know you talk to somebody and you're saying, I've been talking to a lot of people, friends uh, that live around here and. You know, they know that I get the new electric car, drive it around. They ask me, I go to this local coffee shop. The guys, they're always asking me, how, what do you like of it? I tell them, oh, yeah, it gets two to 300 miles of range. And they all say, you know, 300 miles. They say, yeah, I can live with that. So, so now we're getting to the point where, you know, two to 300 miles of range, pretty much anybody can, or most people at least, th- this car will work for them. Now you look at the form of the car. This is a small crossover. Uh, it's bigger than the Kona. It's bigger than the Bolt. So it has more cargo capacity. It has more interior volume. Uh, the back seat is much more legroom than the Kona EV. I know a lot of people like to cross shop the, the Kona because it's Hyundai and Hyundai owns part of Kia and it's got the same uh, size battery pack and the same power electronics and motor. But honestly, I think this the, the Nero is closer to a Nissan Leaf to me. I think the Kona is closer to a Bolt, if you're going to compare them. 
and and the, the to me the 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 Nero is more like a, a Leaf, which is a bigger vehicle, uh, has a little bit more roominess on the inside. The interior seems a little bit more upscale to me. I I I, I really enjoyed how everything was laid out. Sure, there's still some plastic, a little bit more plastic than I, I'd like to see, hard plastic, but it has soft plastic on the armrests. It looks a little bit more upscale than than the Kona. Uh, it's definitely, in my opinion, more upscale than a Bolt. You know, I I, I love the Bolt. I, I I'm not trying to you know um, put the Bolt down. And and don't forget, the Bolt came out a few years ago. Nobody was putting out a thirty-five thousand dollar car that goes two hundred and forty miles. I give Chevy all the credit in the world. But to me, that the interior of the Bolt is in a class below the the Nero uh, EV. The seats in the Bolt are pretty bad. And the wow. Nero EV seats are extremely comfortable. If you get the premium package with the air conditioned seats, then they're really good. So, uh, you know, I, I think the big difference with uh, the those four cars that you kind of compare uh, is that the Leaf and the Nero EV are bigger. They have more room. They're a little bit more comfortable. The Kona EV and the Bolt, they're a little bit smaller. Interior isn't quite as nice. Maybe they're a little bit more focused on sport and uh, the other two are more on like comfortable family movers. If you got a few kids, you need to haul some, you know, a lot of gear every now and then the Nero EV, honestly, it's, it's a great car for you. We should also mention, and even if you're shopping for a gas car, Nero EV is a great car for you because not only you don't have to worry about the, you know, shorter range or whatever. And as a matter of fact, it goes just as far on a tank of, uh, uh, um, uh, on the battery as a tank of gas, but also you don't have to pay for, you know, the, the gas, the oil changes, you know. So I just want to say, I don't think it's just a winner among uh, other electric cars. I think it's a winner out of other, uh, you know, compact SUVs because it also, after the incentive, the price is very, very reasonable and overall savings are taking it even beyond that. Um, okay, so um, yeah, listen, I'm I'm so with you in terms of how great this car uh, is, and how uh, unfortunate it is that Kia does not believe in this car as much as you and you and I do. So hopefully that will change. Um, all right, so I know that uh, we are uh, you you got some news on your Model Three uh, that's uh, that's happening. So give us a quick update on that. Okay, so if you remember last week, I said that I had ordered the car three weeks earlier and I still haven't heard anything, didn't have a van or anything like that. I really wasn't worried about it. Just a little surprised that I hadn't heard anything being that when I ordered it, it said delivery within two weeks. A few days after we aired our video last week, our segment, I got the email from Tesla that everybody loves to get saying, you know, your uh, car is in route and here's your VIN and uh, give us your insurance information and your delivery date's going to be Friday, uh, June 7th, and they're actually dropping it off at my house, which is a pleasant surprise. There's uh, plenty of people in my town and my area I know that have uh, Teslas that went to the uh, um, Springfield Delivery Center to pick them up. As a matter of fact, when I talked to the folks over at the Short Hills Tesla store, that's where they said I would be uh, picking up the car at the Springfield Delivery Center. But to my surprise, they're Making a home delivery for me. I'm not going to complain. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm not going to complain either because I cannot wait to actually for you to compare the Model 3 uh, to the new EV. Even granted, there are different types of cars, obviously. But I feel like those people who want to get an electric car under, you know, 40000 or even under thirty, if you count the uh, counting the incentives, those are the top two choices. So I can't wait for you to drive it. And I can't f wait for you to actually compare the two because you just finished your test drive with a new EV. So, so that's 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 great news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll definitely be doing some comparisons with that, and um, I'll also be doing some comparisons with my i3s, uh, which I still have. I have that lease good to, through December, so I'm going to have half a year with both cars. And you know, they they actually the 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 stick the MSRP on these two vehicles. Is nearly identical, so you know there. You know you may say that, oh geez, you shouldn't really cr cross shop a BMW i3 with a Tesla Model 3. Well, they're about the same price, and uh, I think that makes that worthy of doing some comparison tests. Like I think we all know um, that the Tesla is going to win in most categories, maybe in all categories, 
Uh, maybe not. We'll see. And I look forward to giving you my thoughts. When we do our plugged in segment next week, I should have the car because it's scheduled to be delivered here about an hour and a half before we do our usual segment. So, you know, we might be, uh, I might have the car in the background and it might have like 10 miles on it and uh, we'll chat about it then. Yeah. Uh, even in the comparison between um, i3 and a Model 3, I think there are a couple of things that i3 will have an advantage no matter what is obviously the cargo space because it's a hatchback. And secondly, you know, customer service and bill quality. So I think it's already got a head start there. So we'll, we'll, I'm looking forward to that. It's definitely, a, I, I think, a, a fair comparison just because of the uh, price uh, uh, price range there. So, all right, uh, listen, once again, we revealed something new about the car that's actually positive and surprising. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. I'm excited about your upcoming delivery. I'm sure we'll talk about it uh, next week for sure. But uh, yeah, I, I will. I can't wait for that. So thanks once again for coming on and uh, have a have an amazing weekend. Have a great weekend, Alex. Thanks again. And I always like to remind your followers, if they want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Tomalog. The name is right down here below uh, my uh, ugly mug on your screen. And uh, pretty much primarily post stuff about electric cars. So uh, you won't... Uh, follow me and see all pictures of me with like my family and whatnot. I pretty much use the Twitter account to talk all about electric cars. Yeah. And I've been following you there for a while. And as always, we're also going to have a link to all of your articles on Inside EVs where you consistently write about stuff like this. And there are quite a few articles already about uh, uh, Kieran New Year EV. If you, so if this wasn't enough for you guys, there's a ton of them. Uh, and that's in the description of this video. All right, my friend, I will see you next week. Thanks, Alex. All right, guys. Well, as always, this is uh, a treat. And I, you know, you know, how many people have already driven this damn thing? And look how many new things that Tom has discovered, and including myself, right? Like, so granted, I don't specialize in test drives, but neither does Tom. And, and, and look how much how much amazing information he was able to get um, out of this. And obviously his expertise in, uh, in, in charging um, is, uh, you know, played a, a, a huge role here. And I'm just so happy we have him here every Friday on this channel. And I know just from the viewership and the comments and everything, um, you know, him, him being on this, on, on this channel has just been such an amazing thing. Uh, don't forget to get on our VIP list because we got something amazing going on there. I have a great writer, AJ, that's writing bonus stories for you guys every week. We also got a deal of the month going on. Uh, I've been uh, talking about this for a while. You get a discount code and one of the uh, most uh, uh, most purchased and most popular items at the Evanex store. And uh, the discount is only available for, uh, for, for those of you who sign up for uh, this deal. So just go to e4electric.com slash a VIP. All right, guys, another great, uh, a great informational video with Tom, and I'm looking forward to next week, and I'm so excited for him getting his Model 3. All right, guys, I will see you next time, and of course, remember to stay charged.